For the last century, bison have been at the center of managing brucellosis in the wild. But in the last few years, wildlife managers are looking at elk as another source of brucellosis on the landscape. Uh, yes, there is brucellosis in bison within the greater Yellowstone ecosystem. However, in elk, that exposure rate, so the number of animals that, that have been exposed and test positive on blood tests, has greatly increased over the last 10 or so years. The increase of brucellosis in Montana elk led to the creation of a citizen working group, which last year provided management recommendations for dealing with elk and brucellosis. The recommendation is to manage it, identify it, um, minimize it to the extent possible, not simply by killing elk, but by seeing if you can move elk and cattle away from each other with a focus on that time of year when the risk is greatest. Montana's current known area of brucellosis is located in the southwest corner of the state, an area that wildlife researchers are in the process of learning more about. It's a pretty significant area in Montana, and if you look at some of the other states, it's even larger. So our goal, hopefully, is to understand where it's at, learn a little bit more about it, and then start having those discussions on what do we do, is there anything we can do? Negative. Currently, there is no practical method for eliminating brucellosis in wildlife, so wildlife managers are partnering with egg producers to initiate a prevention strategy. So it is kind of a partnership. We're trying to talk to landowners and say, hey, during the risk period for a brucellosis, which is basically from uh, mid-January through calving period in mid-June, this is where the elk are, and this is where the high-risk areas are. So can we do things to try to keep elk and cattle separate in those areas? And while only in its first year, this prevention strategy is proving effective. Winston Greeley, out among Montana's fish, wildlife, and parks.